In today's video, we're gonna discuss and talk about the differences of a carbon fiber riser versus an aluminum riser or the aluminum riser for those of you that uh, are on that side of the pond. Basically, in this video, we're just gonna cover what I feel is the differences in a carbon fiber riser versus an aluminum riser, benefits and uh, drawbacks to each, as well as some things to consider while purchasing a riser itself. If you're new here, my name is Jay Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. We're going to make this channel a great resource to all types of archery, from form to tuning, uh, equipment setup, training videos, you name it. I'm really just basically working to make this channel a great resource to make you a better archer. So if you're serious about archery, start by hitting that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time I do upload a new video. I'm pumping out a lot of content lately, and you don't want to miss out on what's coming out. You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. Also, I wanted to take a moment to say that I have finally completed the uh, Tuning for Performance book that I've been working on. All the edits are basically done. Uh, we're waiting on them to come from the publisher. So if you're interested in picking up a copy of the tuning book that I have written using all of my methods that I've covered in my tuning series, as well as a whole lot more, including arrow building and all sorts of other stuff, uh, it's available on my website, jkaminski.com. There's a link in the description below. Plus, I'll put up a card at the top here as well. Okay, so... We're gonna talk about the difference in feeling of uh, between an, an aluminum riser and a carbon fiber riser. I'm gonna talk about the feel, the sound, the balance, and I'm gonna talk about a couple other things that you need to consider when shopping for aluminum or carbon fiber risers. So the biggest thing that you're gonna notice uh, between a, an aluminum riser and a carbon fiber riser is how it, uh, how it feels. Especially when you're going from a bow that is like a tech-based riser to a carbon fiber riser like I did, I felt such a big difference in what I actually felt in the handle itself. Meaning after the arrow is gone, that residual, residual vibration and how different it is. Uh, with a carbon fiber riser, it is much more dead in your hand. There is a lot less pinging, a lot less feedback in the actual bow itself. So basically, the arrow would come out of the bow, the string would hit the limbs, and it would just go bunk, and it would stop. It wouldn't go bang, and then keep vibrating. Uh, that was the biggest main difference that I felt between a aluminum riser and a carbon fiber riser. And with that, of course, is going to be a difference in sound. So, of course, with a carbon fiber riser, in that it should be a bit quieter, potentially. Now, from what I've seen as far as studies and vibrational absorbing properties, uh, carbon fiber riser is going to absorb the high frequency uh, sound and vibration levels much quicker than the aluminum riser does. The aluminum riser actually will have a bit of a ringing and a bit of per uh, perpetual uh, humming to it that the carbon fiber won't. Uh, but because the carbon fiber doesn't really take out that low frequency vibration as quickly, um, it still won't be overall that much quieter. Now, it will just definitely sound different. It, the tone will be much lower on the scale than compared to the aluminum riser. Obviously, something that comes with uh, the difference between the two is also the feel of it, the actual feel itself. An aluminum riser will be colder when it's cold and hotter when it's hot to the touch, where the carbon fiber risers are not that good at absorbing uh, heat. So they will tend to feel much more neutral to you as far as touch goes. Now with us that shoot uh, target archery, it's not as important. Uh, but with hunting, I can see that being fairly important when you're shooting sometimes in uh, sub-freezing temperatures. Uh, but with target stuff, that rarely happens. So anyway, I just figured I'd throw that in there for you to just... Uh, for you to think about as well. Now, the next thing that I really noticed between a, a, an, a, an aluminum riser versus a carbon fiber riser is the balance of it. The balance without limbs, the balance without stabilizers, without anything on it. An aluminum riser, typically, if you hold the bow like this, now this is of course without any accessories, without any weights on it, without anything, just the riser itself, an aluminum riser will sit like this. That means that the bottom half of the riser is heavier than the top half of the riser. Now, every carbon fiber and aluminum bow is slightly different. Basically, every Hoyt bow um, has the heavier mass in the bottom of the pocket. On the Win and Wins, the AXT, uh, the ATF, and I believe the ATFX have heavier weight on the lower pocket, 
more so than the top to help with a certain balance and a certain feel at full draw. But a lot of the carbon fiber risers out there will have a neutral balance. So they'll sit like this at full, they'll sit like this without any accessories. Now that's not necessarily a benefit or a drawback, but it is something um, to take into consideration. And the reason that I even realized that this was a, a difference was when I went from a, uh, a, when I went from a regular, you know, the modern Hoyt prodigies or whatever that I was shooting at the time to an AXT, which was before this ATF, they felt very similar. But once I put this bow, this TFT in my hand, it really uh, felt very different. And the reason it felt so different was because it had an even balance. And I needed a whole lot more stabilizer weight on the long rod to help me hold still, to help me have the same holding pattern. Um, without having about three to four more ounces on that long rod, the bow just didn't feel right. I kept floating up, nothing was stable. I just couldn't have a good aiming pattern. And it took me a while to actually realize that. Um, you know, I can think that that is a bit of an advantage uh, for some reasons, um, but I really, I just, in my opinion, I prefer the aluminum risers a little bit more so than the carbon fiber risers. Um, I do like the feel of the carbon risers. I'm actually a fan of it in this bare bow setting um, because of the vibration dampening properties. It's actually very quiet for a bare bow. So I'm actually happy about that. Um, but, you know, it comes down to personal preference. Now, the next section that I'm going to talk about is consistency, flex patterns, um, and, and, and some other things as far as that's concerned. And, and that is part of the reason as to my decision to go with aluminum-based risers. And specifically, either powder-coated or painted aluminum-based risers uh, because I kind of take it to the next step. So, when I'm talking about consistency um, or flex, so basically, as you are pulling the bow back, you're building tension into the system. The limbs are wanting to come and bend towards you. And the engineers that design these bows have to do a good job of controlling how much that riser is going to be flexing. It absolutely bends and flexes while you're at full draw. And what you need to have happening is this top limb pocket and this bottom limb pocket have to be synchronized. They have to be bending equal amounts, top and bottom towards you. And if they don't do a good job at that, it's going to change the way that the bow is tuning and dynamically performing. You're gonna need a different tiller, a different knocking point, all sorts of different things. And it's just gonna cause a whole bunch of issues and ultimately not be as accurate. So an aluminum riser is really easy to control that with how these cutouts are, where they are placed, uh, the, the angle of them, how big they are, how small they are, a million different factors. And then how many cutouts are in the bottom versus the top. Um, but then also another thing to consider is are these pockets flexing in plane or out of plane? Does the bow want to turn into a taco when you pull it back or does it want to spend straight back towards you? So not only do the pockets have to flex equally top and bottom, but they have to flex in plane towards the archer and not deviate or twist or do anything like that. Again, an aluminum riser, you can control that easily because these are machined out of either a solid billet block or they are uh, forged and then machined to be finished. And either way, it's super consistent. The, it really does not change from riser to riser from the base material itself. Now there can be machining errors and then also there can be errors when they are doing the finishing and that is why I chose a painted or a powder coated riser because if you look very carefully at a polished riser, um, or any riser that is anodized, such as this Hoyt behind me, they are hand buffed and hand polished before they get anodized so they're more shiny. Now, that doesn't sound like too big of a deal, and I may be over analytical as far as this is concerned, but if I think about it, and if you look at any of these risers, if you look on this radius versus this radius, you will see a difference in the radiuses from left to right. And that is not, usually, that is not because of machining differences in the machining program. It is because the people who hand buff these spent more time on this side than they did on this side. And what is that doing? It's removing more material on this side compared to that side. So it's weaker on this side than that side. Now, that may be over analytical and it, may, might, and it might make me a bit crazy, but the powder coated risers and the risers that are painted 
are not polished before they are powder coated. They are blasted and roughed up and then they are powder coated or painted to make the paint or powder coat adhere to the riser and that's it. They do not polish those before they are done. So you'll notice on a powder coated riser, the edges are much sharper and once that powder coat wears away, you can actually cut yourself on the edges because they are perfect, they are not polished. That's why I chose painted or powder coated aluminum risers. Why I am not necessarily a fan of these carbon fiber ones from an engineering standpoint is the base material. It is carbon fiber, but it is woven and it is woven by a machine. There is also resins that are inside of the molds and you know, yes, they're done on, under extreme forces and high heat to remove any sort of air bubbles or inconsistencies or thicker or thinner epoxies in certain areas. But, you know, I just, from an engineering standpoint, I am concerned with the consistency of the flex top and bottom in and out of plane from carbon fiber riser to carbon fiber riser. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that all of them are bad or all of them are good. I just don't know. I have not seen the data. I have not seen anybody test them and say, okay, I'm gonna grab 10 TFTs and I'm gonna measure them and see how they flex uh, under forces. And, and, and see if they're all consistent from bow to bow. I know they are in aluminum because aluminum's consistent. Carbon, I'm concerned. Especially once they start doing things on the inside of these bows, you know, they're adding these uh, bosses to mount your sights and your stabilizers and your limbs. Also in this one, there is a steel rod or an I-beam or something that they put from the top half of the riser down into the grip. So it stiffens this portion of the bow up and wants to control that flex in and out of plane. I don't know. Is it consistent? I'm not sure. I haven't seen enough data to be able to say yes or no. So from my over analytical brain, I chose the aluminum risers for that reason. But like I said, while shooting Baribo, this dead, less pingy, harsh feeling I'm actually really enjoying. Also, I wanted to make a quick note that because uh, this channel and everything else is becoming much more popular than I anticipated so soon on, uh, responding to questions and comments and emails and everything is kind of becoming a bit overwhelming. If you've got a really good question that you really want answered, I would really suggest becoming a Patreon uh, supporter of this channel. I have set up something called Discord, which is basically like a little message board that all of the patrons plus myself are active on, asking questions, supporting each other, uh, training, all sorts of different things. And I do make sure that I make time out of every day to go in there and respond to people's questions. Um, due to the volume of questions elsewhere, it's kind of becoming very difficult to be consistent into responding questions. So I'd encourage you to check out uh, becoming a Patreon supporter of this page or becoming a patron. There'll be a link in the description below, plus I'll put a card up at the top here. Uh, the lowest level support is five bucks a month. Um, to, to basically have access to that Discord server. And essentially, like I said, I guarantee I'll respond to your questions there. Here, it's just becoming very difficult and uh, I just don't have that time anymore. Thanks for watching and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.